Hello, gamers. This god release has been on my list of gods I wanted to see in Smite for a very long time. Finally, he's here in all his massive glory, Atlas, Titan of the Cosmos. He is currently my favorite guardian to play. Atlas brings a hell of a lot of lane control and lane presence on top of all that. He's super beefy and actually decently mobile. He is a true support, the first true support brought into Smite. Today, I will be covering him in a quick guide and a comprehensive guide going over all the basics and ins and outs to Atlas. So please stick around, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my future god guides. Let's get this started. Let's kick things off with my quick guide to Atlas. So like I said previously, Atlas is Smite's first true support. He does next to nothing for damage and hits like a wet noodle. So if you're trying to do any damage or you're just simply boxing with the enemy and forgetting about your teammates, you're going to be absolutely useless and you're going to lose your matches. Let's quickly Go over his passive and abilities afterwards i'll cover some easy combos and finish off with some do's and don'ts to playing atlas alice's passive is called the astrolabe as alice receives or deals damage his passive meter begins to fill as i land autos on this sneath here and as she's auto attacking me you can see that my passive meter is filling when you see that your passive meter starts to change and you get this ring rotating around the sphere, your next auto attack will become an area effect tremble in front of you. Alice's first ability is called Unburden. Alice throws his astrolabe at the position of his choosing. When it lands, it deals damage and slows enemies within the area of effect. Additionally, this ability lasts for a couple of seconds remaining where it has been thrown until Atlas recalls it back early by pressing the ability again or until the ability times out returning on its own. When you auto attack after you have thrown your globe, instead of autoing in front of you, you do an explosion around the globe, dealing damage to all enemies within the area. Atlas's second ability is Gravity Pull. It is a cone effect in front of you, doing two different things and actually interacts with your one as well. Enemy players that are caught within the first half of this cone are picked up after it's channeled and you are allowed to move around with them in your hands for a couple of seconds and then throw them. If they are caught within the second half of this cone, they are only pulled towards Atlas. Now, if you use this ability after you've thrown your astrolabe, if enemies are towards the center of this area effect, they are pulled and then tossed towards Atlas. If they are caught within the edge and you activate gravity pull, they are just pulled towards the middle. Atlas's third ability is Kinetic Charge. Alice starts running forward and then will collide into enemy gods dealing damage. Additionally, if you've passed any teammates that had any slow effects that were caused by enemy players applied to them, you will strip them, cleansing them of the slow. And then when you collide with enemy god, you will apply that slow to them instead. Kinetic charge also increases the movement speed of allies as they are running within the radius that is around Atlas while he is running in kinetic charge. Atlas's ultimate is Gamma Ray Burst. Atlas shoots a giant Gamma Ray in the area of his desire. His ability does damage and persists for a couple of seconds in the initial casted area. It strips power and protections from enemy players. Now, 
This ability will also shoot forward in a straight line after a couple of seconds and can also be shot early by reactivating the ability. Atlas's ultimate can also be aimed. It is dependent on the direction that you are facing. As you can see, as I turn, that arrow in the back is changing with the direction that I am facing. Now let's cover combos for Atlas. I'm going to be starting with some initiation combos. Start off with kinetic charge, running forward and then colliding with the enemy player. Then pull them or grab them with gravity pull and then throw them immediately throw out your astrolabe within burden to slow them cast your ultimate and then turn around and face in the direction that they're going to be fleeing in and chase them down while hitting them with some autos this is what that looks like pretty simple initiation combo two Start by walking up and grabbing the enemy player with gravity pull, picking them up, turning around, and then throw them towards your allies. Throw the astrolabe, slowing them, and then charge into them with kinetic charge, and then throw down your ultimate ahead of them so they have to walk through the entire radius of your ultimate. This is what that looks like. Pretty simple, not too hard to do. Now let's go over some disengage combos for Atlas. Start by turning around and running away with kinetic charge. The enemy is chasing after you and they're right behind you. Throw your astrolabe with in burden ahead of you, walk past it and then activate gravity pull when they're in the area to pull them towards the globe, slowing them, allowing you to escape. Atlas's second disengage combo starts by picking up the enemy god with gravity pull. Turn around and throw them away from you, immediately throwing your globe with in burden, slowing them, and then turning around and running with kinetic charge. That will get you out of a lot of situations. Now let's finish this up with some do's and don'ts for Atlas. Let's quickly go over good things about Atlas and bad things about Atlas. Good things. Atlas has a lot of lane presence and lane control if you use his abilities correctly. You can basically bully enemy players, throwing them around, slowing them, and just being a straight up nuisance, blocking them from your teammates. Bad things about Atlas. Teach us no damage. Absolutely no damage. So don't really bot waste your time trying to just basically box with enemy gods. You want to more, more or less focus on being in the, the enemy player's way and protecting your teammates. You should never be rushing forward to try to secure a kill. Always remain close to your teammates and assist them by spoon feeding them kills throughout the match. We're going to go over what I've seen a lot of Atlas players do recently as he has dropped and it's things that you do not want to be doing. As I stated earlier, do not go off chasing kills, stay by your teammates. I've seen this a lot. You're going to be useless. You're not going to get that kill. You're going to end up dying and whoever you're chasing is going to get away. Or you're going to get that kill, turn around and find that your entire team has been wiped out by the enemy team. So try to stay close to your teammates and provide assistance as much as you can. You basically want to start by initiating on the enemy, getting in, holding them down, throwing as I screw up gravity pull. Yep, that just happened. Yep, let's try it again. Start by initiating on the enemy player, being a nuisance, locking them down and keeping them close to your teammates. Always look at your map to see what's happening to your teammates and stay close. At, at any moment when you initiate and you throw your abilities, if you notice that something is happening to your teammates, turn around and go and assist them for getting the target that you're pinning down. Additionally, something that you really want to look out for with Atlas when it comes to enemies basically outplaying you is 
people that have played against Atlas enough, which is going to happen within the next couple of weeks, will know that as soon if like basically if you're just poking and poking by throwing your astrolabe constantly and then going in and just randomly pulling people like such, they'll know that you have nothing to protect your teammates with. And they're just going to jump behind you and massacre your teammates and you can't do anything about it. So if you can, if there's just like a minion wave, throw out your astrolabe and do some auto attacks and do nothing more. Make sure you keep your, uh, make sure you, you keep gravity pool available just in case the enemy decides to jump in and screw with your teammates. Basically, as soon as they jump in, just grab them with a gravity pull and pull them, push them or pull them towards your teammates. What you can also do is just quickly cast your ultimate on top of where the fight is happening to strip protections and power for the enemy gods. So it makes it a little harder for them to kill your teammates and then screw around with them with your gravity pull that you have left on reserves. And that wraps up my quick guide for Atlas Titan of the Cosmos. If you're sticking around, my comprehensive guide will be starting shortly. For everyone leaving, thank you for watching. Leave me a like, a comment below, and please subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future god guides. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next god guide. Bye! <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. Let's jump into the more nitty and gritty comprehensive guide for Atlas Titan of the Cosmos. Now, Atlas is the only true support that has been released into Smite. He does absolutely no damage, but makes up for this with his lane presence. Due to all the crowd control, debuffs, and buffs he brings to the table. I will start off with his abilities, moving into combos, trailing into leveling, and finishing off with do's and don'ts. Without further ado, let's get started. Atlas's passive is called the Astrolabe. As Atlas deals damage or receives damage, he stores energy into his globe. That energy then turns his next auto attack upon max energy storage into an area effect tremble. This does additional damage more than your regular basic attack. Now above your avatar, you will see this portrait that has a glowing rotating sphere. That is the passive meter. You'll know when your next auto attack is ready to be an area effect tremble when the sphere grows to that first ring and then the outer ring starts to spin. Let's quickly take a look at this. So I'm going to quickly fight this raw for a little bit. You'll see that sphere is glowing and there you go. It is ready to go. The ring is rotating around the sphere. My next auto attack will be that area effect tremble. Let's look at some stats now. When Atlas deals damage or receives, he gains 1.25 energy that is stored into the astrolabe. Minions provide one tenth of the energy and at 20 energy, your next basic attack does 1.5 times the damage with a second and a half swing time. Gods that are hit are trembled for two seconds exactly and minions are stunned. Atlas can store up to 30 energy. Now when it comes to getting the 30 energy, it isn't super important unless there's no fighting happening around and you're just kind of sitting in lane waiting for your ADC or whoever's with you to clear the lane. You can, you know, throw out an ability or two to try to get up to max energy. Basically, when you get into a next fight, you'll basically start off with hitting your passive and then accumulating enough energy quickly to use it twice. It isn't the most important thing. I mean, the tremble isn't super strong. It's basically Bacchus ult, but like dumbed down. So don't really prioritize getting that 30 energy unless you have nothing to do and you're just kind of sitting and waiting. Alice's first ability is Unburden. Atlas throws his astrolabe at a area of his choosing with a pretty big area of effect. This ability is pretty hard to miss. It goes out, explodes, doing damage, and slows enemy gods. Additionally, when you fire this ability, you can refire it to have it come back quicker 
or it will remain in that area for approximately five seconds. The ability also comes combos with your second ability in your kit, but we'll go over that when we hit the second ability. Let's take a look at stats. So for damage, it's doing 30 at rank one and 170 at max rank with 20% magical scaling. It has a slow of 10 at rank one and 20% at max rank with a slow duration of two seconds. The explosion damage coming from your autos is 23 plus six of your level. Alice's second ability is Gravity Pull. It is a cone effect ability in front of Atlas. Enemies that are caught within the first half of this cone are picked up by Alice after channeling and after a short delay are thrown in front of Atlas. Enemies that are caught in the second half of the ability are pulled towards Atlas. If the astrolabe has been thrown out and you use Gravity Pull, if they are around the edge of the ability, they're pulled towards the center and then load. Oh, I guess that Odin was close enough. I was going to go over that next. If you throw the astrolabe, astrolabe and they're in the middle and use gravity pull, it grabs them and then throws them towards Atlas. Let's take a look at these stats. The pull damage at level one is 50 and 170 at max rank with additional magical scaling. The launch damage is 50 with 170 at max rank with additional magical scaling. Alice's third ability is Kinetic Charge. Alice starts sprinting forward, dashing and then hitting an enemy god. This ability will strip any slow debuffs that have been applied to your teammates. It's about 25% and stacks up to 75%. You can pull off more than one stack, accumulating it to get up to the 75%. If you collide with an enemy player when you have those slow stacks, you will apply that slow to them instead. Let's take a quick look at the stats for this ability. At rank 1, you're doing 80 damage and then 300 at max rank with additional magical scaling. The movement speed boost that you're getting is 25% at rank 1 and then 35% at max rank. <laughs> Atlas's ultimate is Gamma Ray Burst. This is a giant AoE channel ability that does damage every 0.5 seconds and strips protections and power from enemy gods. As you just saw, after 5 seconds of lingering at the originally casted area, it shoots forward in a giant ray of light. The debuffs applied by this ability stack up to 5 times at base level and then up to 7 at max rank. You can also aim what direction this ability is going to travel after the 5 seconds. Additionally, you can also reactivate the ability to have it shoot the light quicker. When I cast the ability, you'll see this area arrow in the back that is basically aiming in the direction that I am facing. The so whatever direction that you are facing is the direction that the ray is going to travel. The ray does apply three stacks of the debuff instantly. Let's take a look at the stats for Gamma Ray Burst. The damage is 25 at rank 1 and 65 at max rank. The protection reduction is 5% per stack, and the power reduction is 2% per stack. The focus damage is 100 at max rank and 280 at max rank with additional magical scaling. And if I look just above here, yep, it is 5 at max rank, 6 at third rank, and 7 at max rank for the stacking debuff. Moving on to combos, let's start off with some initiation combos. Start off with your gravity pull, quickly move into an auto right as the ability is going to push the enemy god out of your hands, throw your astrolobe, auto again, recast it to bring your globe back, kinetic charge, auto once you've hit the enemy, and then cast your gamma ray burst. Let's show this off.
There you go. Not too bad. A little bit complicated, but it does. It's basically maxing, maximizing how much damage you're doing and CC that you're doing to enemy god. Winner using that combo, take into account the enemy's escape if they have any, if any leaps or anything like that. So as you use gravity pool, basically let's revise this a little bit. If you use your gravity pool starting off, throw them, wait for them to leap if they have it, throw your globe, auto, recast to bring it back, kinetic charge, auto, and ult to continue the combo out. Your second initiation combo is to use Unburden to throw your Astrolabe, auto, then use Gravity Pull to pull them towards the center of the Astrolabe, wait for them to get hurled or pull to the center, auto again, then put down your Gamma Ray Burst to recall your Astrolabe and use Kinetic Charge to do a little bit more damage. Let's show this off. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's go into your third initiation combo. Atlas's third initiation combo. You're going to start with kinetic charge, getting in close, preferably hitting them, doing damage, getting an auto in, and then pulling them, picking them up with gravity pull, throwing them, autoing, then throwing out your astrolabe with unburden autoing and then putting gamma ray out recalling your astrolabe and autoing and basically keeping on them with your autos let's show this off real quick oh my passive meter totally ruined that let's just get rid of that real quick uh, that's another thing to keep into account if your passive is up it kind of will hinder these the quick succession of these combos so it is if it is up try to keep that in mind all right let's try this again start off with your kinetic charge auto gravity pull auto again throw gamma ray recall and out easy your final initiation combo and this is probably your strongest combo that you can use when you're in team fights as a fight breaks out, throw your Gamma Ray Burst out first, then throw your Astrolabe to slow people that are in the area, then pull them in towards the center so they are forced to sit in your ultimate with your gravity pull, and then dash in to cleanse any slows that might be on your teammates, and so you can get into the fight and do additional damage to the enemies that are in the fight. Let's show this off. there that is in most time and a lot of team fights a lot of people are going to be running <laughs> like running fast and running very far because that shit hurts and it only hurts because the focus damage from the gamma ray actually does hurt. it's like the only ability atlas has that hurts a decent amount now let's go for some peel slash disengage combos the first one that you can do is relatively the most easiest thing you can do if you're getting chased and you got absolutely nothing you can do let's just say there's more than one person chasing you you will start basically by putting down your gamma ray burst and then just running most people will give up the chase as soon as you see the ultimate and not bother going through it so you can get away that way your second disengage uh that you can do is Start running with kinetic charge. If people are giving chase, put your astrolabe down behind you and then use gravity pull to keep them off of you. Your final disengage that you can do with Atlas, start off by picking them up with gravity pull, throwing them behind you, then immediately throwing your astrolabe with unburning, turning around and using kinetic charge to get the hell out of there. Let's show this off. And there you go. That's going to get you out of a lot of situations. That's also really good to peel out any teammates that might be getting chased by literally anybody. Assassins most of the time. <laughs> Let's get into leveling. The first five points, the order that I put them into is at level one, put 
one point into unburden your second point into gravity pool your third point into unburden again fourth point into kinetic charge and your fifth point into gamma ray burst afterwards i like to max unburden then kinetic charge then gravity pull and finishing off with your gamma ray burst if you are starting where in any other game mode like clash or joust where you're starting off at level three put two points into unburden and one point into gravity pull and then proceed to do what i just stated earlier <laughs> Do's and don'ts with Atlas. Let's start off with things I've seen other players do with Atlas that just basically makes them useless. So when you're playing Atlas, if you're spending most of your time boxing and then going in and just continuing boxing and just not being aware of what's happening to your teammates in the back, uh, they're going to get slaughtered. They're going to die. Uh, you're not going to be doing much. You're going to turn around to a dead team and then they're all going to turn on you and kill you. So you really need to keep in mind when you're playing Atlas that you initiate and throw your abilities and quickly make sure to turn around to see what your teammates are doing or just to keep an eye on the mini map as you're going in to see if anyone is getting jumped, etc, etc. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, because I've been seeing it quite a bit, especially in the matches that I've been playing, people are, are kind of starting to learn when to engage when there's an Atlas in the match. And that's basically red. Uh, you know, I'll see a lot of Atlases throughout their astrolabe and then use gravity pull to pull people, get a couple autos in, not really doing much, just doing it for a little bit of poke damage. Honestly, don't really bother. If you're going to do poke damage, just throw your astrolabe with unburden. Do a couple autos and bring it back because if you throw your astrolabe and then use gravity pull people that know will just instantly jump on your back line and kill them and there is literally nothing you can do because you use your two abilities that could have done something about it so if you're going to poke poke with your ability unburden get some autos in and then recall it back leaving gravity pull up so if someone does come in after you can at least pull them or pick them up and throw them away from your teammates now let's go into some positive things with Atlas. Atlas has a lot of CC uh, and because of that, he can really keep his teammates up for a really long time. So get into the habit in fights if someone jumps your teammate to right away, just throw your ultimate onto them. This is gonna strip protections from the enemy god and power from them. So they're not only are they gonna be receiving more damage from your teammate, they're also going to be dealing out less damage to your teammate making them survive longer this is really good when they're low health and you have a teammate running away you can throw that onto them and then use your other abilities to get that person off of your teammate uh, another good thing to get into the habit of uh one particular god this is good for is a moosing cab with your kinetic charge um a lot of amusing cabs they love they love to put your their hives out and then just shoot you with their goddamn uh slowing uh i forget what the ability is called at the moment basically they like to use their hive and then get that slow up well you can kind of counter a moose and cap pretty hard if he does this because if he uses if he puts that slow on multiple teammates you can just use your kinetic charge right away to strip that slow off of them and then run at the moose and cab pretty much guaranteeing that you're getting the 75% movement slow reduction, hitting him and basically moving him or stopping him to a halt. So get into the habit if you know um, a god that has a slow, or if someone has a demo of isolation, anything like that, just saving your kinetic charge sometimes to so just to strip that slow off your teammates. Uh, lastly, I think the only, yeah, last thing I have to say, um, don't always use your gravity pull to uh, start a fight, like to grab somebody and then throw them towards your teammates. Uh, sometimes if you have other initiators, like other tanks and warriors, and they're coming in on somebody, use that gravity pull to grab them and throw them away from your teammates so they're not being initiated on. You can really ruin someone's initiation uh, this way. I've had a couple people throw out an ability, getting ready to jump in after, and I've grabbed them and then waited uh, and throw them away a good example of this is bastet i've had a bastet use her combo and it's just about to kill somebody because they're low health uh and she's going to use that leap to get on them 
uh, and I'll grab her and then chuck her away and she won't have to reach or she will jump in and I will time the ability so just before she lands I will pick her up and hold her and then throw her and by the time I have held her and thrown her her leap back is gone basically guaranteeing that she's going to die where she is because she does not have her escape anymore that's everything that I know about Atlas Titan of the Cosmos. If you've made it this far in my video, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment below with any feedback so I can improve these videos for you guys. Leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next God Guide. Thanks for watching. Bye now.